And for more analysis on the markets, let's bring in David Bonson. He is the CIO of the Bonson Group, which has $3.6 billion in assets under management. David, great to have you with us. Let's zoom out a little bit from the meme stocks and talk about the broader markets, because we have seen quite the bounce back over the past week or so. Curious to hear how much conviction you have behind that. Well, it's a mixed bag because not only are we active managers, but particularly in this time period, we think it behooves all people to be less index focused and, and uh, be more stock picking oriented. And, and so in an environment like this, uh, we're a little bit agnostic as to what the broad market movement might be. And yet we have high conviction on either the overvaluation or opportunity of select pockets. Hmm. And that's what we're seeing right now. I, I would not be jumping back in to the NASDAQ at large or the S&P 500 here. Why is that? I mean, do you think we have further to go? After all, we're only about 4% off of all-time highs in the S&P 500 right now. We're only about 4% off all-time highs, and we're sitting a little bit over 20 times forward earnings. And if you were to get a whopping 10% earnings growth this year, you don't move the multiple at all. Mm. OK, and so basically you would have to get 20 percent earnings growth just to come down to a 19 multiple to get a 6 percent return in the market. Now, can things get really, really ahead of themselves? I mean, it's happened once or twice. But at this point, multiples are coming down. And last year you had fantastic earnings growth to soak it up. But we pulled forward a lot of 2022 earnings growth into 21. So the index at large just simply is priced in. There's just too much movement that's already taking place. That really forces us to find value. OK, David, so even with you know the turbulence, the pullback that we've seen in tech shares, perhaps they're still overvalued. Where do you see bargains right now? Where are the opportunities? Well, as contrarians, we always start with where performance has been worst. And it's one of the reasons why we did so well over the last year and a half in energy as it got slaughtered. And it had not just been a COVID slaughter. Mm -hmm. Energy had been underperforming for years before COVID. And that was the best performing sector last year and is the only positive performing sector uh, this year until a couple uh, weeks ago. Uh, but yet you still have significant opportunities in the midstream energy sector where things are at very high yield spreads and very low valuation historically. Consumer staples are worth looking at. They have had a lot of inflationary pressures that have hurt their input prices. And a lot of that's priced in. So mm. now the question is, can pricing power come to the rescue and push well, these consumer staples over? Historically, it's happened. Before we get to consumer staples, I want to go back to energy because ExxonMobil is one of the companies that, that's your pick. And I wonder why you're still bullish on ExxonMobil, given how much oil prices have gone up just so far this year. Do you think there's still room for them to go higher? Well, ExxonMobil is back to the price it was when oil had stabilized in the $60 range. So ExxonMobil stock price is not reflecting $100 oil. Now, maybe oil comes back down, but I don't think it's coming. You live in California, 60. so you're paying even more for gas than anyone else. So hopefully it does you know, that, soon. That's right. So Exxon benefits with its downstream business from those high prices, the upstream, the big margins in production. But fundamentally, Exxon is just an um, incredible story here of capital discipline. They've cut massive amounts of money out of their expense structure, and we think are leaner and meaner. But at the risk of sounding political, there's also a play for Exxon and Chevron because of administration policy. What the Biden administration is doing by not encouraging future production from other co companies is benefiting the large behemoths. It keeps out competition and protects their own market share. So we find Exxon and Chevron very investable at these levels. And David, we don't have much time left, but I'm curious what other names that you're keeping an eye on where you see opportunity right now. So one name I want to point to is Walmart, where just the most basic of inflation hedges, if people think there's inflation, it's because Walmart is a company that has the ability to price it on in consumer goods. And people can, uh, with inflationary pressure, stop spending less money of certain things. They do not start spending less money at Walmart. It's just not a story that is caught up in that. And yet they've been incredible executors over the last couple of years. So we like Walmart and then the consumer staple side, a name that has gotten very cheap 
and we recently added to it on uh, weakness is Clorox. We think that's a story that is uh, really compelling from a value standpoint. Yeah, pretty wild to see the way that Clorox has come down to essentially pre-pandemic levels at this point. Uh, David Bonson, Chief Investment Officer of the Bonson Group. David, uh, thanks for joining us. Really great to have you on the program.